So for today's video, I figured that I was gonna try something a little bit different. Instead of just doing a regular speed development, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some maps that were sent to me by other RPG Maker users, and we're gonna see if we can learn something from these maps. I'm gonna be giving constructive criticism, some constructive feedback on these maps, and just see where they can be improved and where they can be made better. And then at the end, I'm going to remake one of the maps. So let's go ahead and get started with this first one. This map was made by a user who goes by the name Roomba, and he's a fairly inexperienced map maker, but honestly, this work here is looking pretty solid. He made us a nice little wintry town sort of map, and uh, it looks pretty good. The things that stand out to me as being sort of a problem is there's a lot of dead space sort of in the middle of the town. As you can see, there's sort of uh, just big open spaces behind that one tile high building there. And it's just kind of, it's just sort of boring. Uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind while you're making maps is you want to, you want to try to have it so that no matter where the player is standing, there's something visually interesting for them to look at. So when you're making a map, when you're looking at an area, think in your head about what the player is gonna be able to see and try to make it interesting. There are just spots in this map that aren't that interesting if a player was standing there. But as I said, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. I like the little farm fenced off area in the center over there, that looks really good. It definitely looks like what you would imagine a small little garden might look like that's been hit by a blizzard. I really like the maze down in the lower corner over there or maze-like area. I could imagine like maybe there's some chests over in there or maybe there was a side quest that sends you in there. It looks really good. I also like the graveyard up there. I thought that was a nice touch. It definitely gives character to the area which is something that you need to be thinking about when you're making maps is you need to be thinking about what sort of landmark or characteristic can I use to make this town memorable. Now, a couple things that stand out, as I said, there was the empty spaces. Uh, you have water down in the corner that doesn't go anywhere or come from anywhere with that little pond. I mean, while it works within the map, it's one of those things that I'm kind of a stickler for. It doesn't make a ton of sense for there just to be a, a a tiny one tile sized body of water. It's just weird to me. Uh, also one one tile wide paths. I see them all the time and it's like, it just doesn't make sense because think about it like this. When you're in a town, how often are you ever in a space that is just as wide as your body? It's not very often. So usually two or three for uh, paths is a good idea, but uh, Overall, I think that Roomba did a great job on this. He definitely shows that he has an understanding of sort of how RPG towns look, and I'm excited to see more stuff from him. Next up, we actually have a set of three maps from Trokzul. Uh, it's sort of a cabin in the woods kind of scene, and he actually went ahead and he gave me an interior map for the cabin and an interior for the sort of cave area. This map is actually really good. I really like it. Um, he's got some nice variation with the trees, which is always super nice. When you have when you have trees that are just like repeating the same tree over and over and over, players are gonna see that and it's gonna kind of take them out. So you wanna sort of space them, throw in different trees, kind of mess up your pattern so that it's not quite so uniform. And he does a pretty good job on this map of that. There are some spots where it's not so great, but Overall, it looks pretty good. Again, we have an issue of the one tile wide path. On this map, it kind of works because it's sort of like a broken up, sort of worn, and it hasn't been used in a while kind of look to it, which works. Um, he also has a problem of there being just a lot of dead space, uh, a lot of just plain grass tiles that aren't that visually interesting to look at, but it, it works. For this, uh, for this map. The one thing that kind of weirds me out is I get the vibe that this is sort of like a not that well known location. It's not really a place that people go to all that often. And yet there's a garden that looks like it's in bloom. So someone's growing stuff right now. Just seems odd to me. Um, Cause it seems to clash with the overall feel of the rest of the map. Then we go into the interior and I like the interior 
Uh, it definitely feels like what you would imagine a cabin feels like. It does feel slightly different from what the exterior feels like. Cause again, the exterior feels like it's like a secluded hidden place that nobody ever goes. And then on the inside, it feels cozy and it feels, you know, very homely. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the bedroom down in the corner. I think that they're, I don't know, just something about the layout of it doesn't feel right to me. Probably the bed because, and I know that that's sort of, it's a weakness of the base tile set that there's no like beds that are facing the other direction, but it seems weird to me to have the headboard facing towards the doorway. It just doesn't, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Um, but Again, that's a that's a failing of the tile set, not necessarily Troxul's work. Overall, the interior definitely works super well. Um, then we have the cave. The cave, it definitely feels like something that like you'd go in there and maybe there's like an NPC that you gotta talk to, or maybe there's like some some random event happens in here. It definitely does not feel like a dungeon, but I don't think it was meant to be a dungeon-like map. It's it's most definitely like uh, some place that you go in, you talk to somebody and you leave, but overall it's really good. And honestly, these three maps are really good. Just overall, there's not really a lot that I'd change about them. Just kind of the, the small, tiny little nitpicks that I have with it. Then we have this map from dry cool. Now, uh, this map, we actually, we had quite a bit of a discussion about this map, me and him. And, uh, this map was supposed to be like sort of a ruined, like temple kind of look from what I gathered and overall like it I look at this map and to me it feels like super old school JRPGs like I'm talking like the sort of stuff you'd see on like the Commodore like really old RPGs um which I dig but I have a few problems with this map um first and foremost is the grass tile that's the very first thing that jumps out at me well grass in air quotes it actually that looks like that's like a vine tile Either way, that's a really gross tile to use for your grass tile. It just does not work. And on top of that, like it doesn't interact with the path tile. So it looks very blocky and just doesn't flow, doesn't feel natural, um, which is a little bit problematic. Uh, and then the buildings, there are some small details that really help them, help sell that this is ruin. Um, like you got the plants in the walls and the broken banners and everything. And I like that. Uh, I would just like to see like actual spots in the walls missing. Uh, I feel like that would really help sell the ruin look a little bit better and also just like not be as uniform with the positioning of the buildings that might help out a lot. And the trees, you don't have a lot of variation in the trees. Um, and there's a lot of dead space between the trees. I don't know necessarily like if he wanted there to be a lot of room for the player to go exploring around. I don't know if there's like, if it's the sort of thing where maybe he has a game where there isn't random encounters and the encounters are walking around. And so he wants space where the player can go to avoid the encounters or to fight encounters. I don't know how his game is working, but it's just, it's way too open. Um, and there's not a lot of variation on the trees. I, I look at this map and I, can see in my head the way that I would probably do it, um, which is much more overgrown, much more sort of, you know, nature retaking the, the buildings, um, which is why I think actually this is going to be the map that I'm going to recreate in this video. So let's go ahead and uh, I will do that now. So enjoy.
So there you go. Those are the two maps side by side. You can see the, uh, the differences in the mapping styles and just sort of what I was able to do with it to take the basic, uh, the basic sort of look of that map and just sort of put my own spin on it. I will be sending this map file to Drycool so that he can choose to use it if he wants or just choose to learn from it if he wants. So if you guys would like the opportunity to have your maps critiqued and possibly remade by me, feel free to send them to me on Twitter. I am at Bender Waffles. Just send me a screenshot, that'll work. And of course, guys, you can like this video or not. If you didn't like it, then hit the dislike button, whatever works for you. While you're down there, you can consider subscribing if you want and uh, leave me a comment letting me know what you think of this sort of show. If this is the kind of thing that you guys enjoy and if I can get more map submissions to look at, uh, I might do more episodes like this. But uh, if you guys like this, as I said, you can like it and uh, you can click on the buttons here on screen to go to other videos that I've made, uh, or you can click on the round thing to subscribe. Uh, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.